General, I want to switch gears a little bit. Yeah. F-35. Sure. And Expeditionary Airfield, sure. 29 Palms. Uh, years ago, when the, the Harrier first came out, used to have, have a sweeper to clear uh, a Lyman Road at Camp Lejeune. I used right. to always laugh when I saw that because of the FOD and all that right. stuff. Uh, is that going to be a problem, or are we going to have to go away completely from an expeditionary airfield? No. Because when that wind blows at 29 Palms or in the desert or all that stuff there, this is a very, very expensive aircraft. And uh, if you can reassure me and tell me everything's going to be fine. Uh, I think uh, we just actually did a deployment up to 29 Palms. In, I know. In a I red beach. To... And uh, bottom line is they it's the typical is November, December wind patterns out there. And it wasn't necessarily the, they, they lost some sorties for weather mainly due to the crosswind limitations on, you know, uh, for the air, for a 40 knot direct crosswind. And a lot of times above about 25, 30 knots, you don't fly because if a pilot ejects out of an airplane, they get, they get pulled across the desert floor and get, could get hurt that way. So 20 amp palms is a training environment. So it's not, not operational. So we, we limit uh, to the wind limits out there to make sure that we don't hurt somebody. Uh, we actually dinged on that, on that uh, particular deployment, we actually had blade damage to two engines. Right, but it wasn't. But when we looked at it, it wasn't blade damage required. The engine be removed. So we do have that in every jet aircraft out there. Little rocks, little things get pulled up. But in this case here, the F-35 proved to be very robust. It had some blade damage. It was blended out, and it wasn't a problem. So what we are doing, though, in that, uh, uh, Major General Mike Rocco, a uh, great commander down there at uh, at uh, Miramar, they're very conservative, and I think that's sensible. Uh, but we took that airplane. wasn't supposed to go to 20 on Palms until. This spring, yeah. we pushed it up there early because one, we wanted to stress, you know, how the airplane operate logistically, uh, how it's going to operate in support of the grunts out there at uh, 20 amp palms, and uh, frankly, that airplane belongs in every climate place, not just on a main base, but on a, an amphibious carrier, and also too in our expeditionary bases. So we got a lot of the data points we wanted to out of that. We will always have to be FOD conscious when we go to expeditionary bases, but part of that is how we operate, and part of that's what we have to sweep up to go in there. Thank you very much, I yield back. Representative Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Admiral Manazir, over the past couple of years, the Navy has cut uh, F-35Cs in the future year's defense planning budget. With the threat growing in numbers and capability in the 2020 time frame and beyond, what is the Navy doing to recover these uh, aircraft uh, to ensure our carrier strike groups and carrier air wings remain relevant and are able to counter the growing threats. Thank you very much for your question, uh, Mr. Johnson. The Navy's uh, procurement of F-35C aircraft uh, were uh, cut for fiscal reasons in line with other Navy priorities. Uh, and thank you to the committee for the support of extra F-35Cs in the PB-16 budget, and that goes a long way towards capability. Uh, you will find the Navy buying additional F-35Cs in greater numbers as we go forward. The Navy, uh, operating off of our flight decks, operates integrated capability with our Super Hornets, E-18G Growlers, E-2D Hawkeyes, and our helicopters to create a capability that can overmatch the threat. The F-35C is a critical part of that netted capability. Its stealth characteristics, its data fusion capability, and its very advanced um, identification of the threat capability allow us to extend the reach of the carrier strike group. So I think you will find, sir, that as we push forward in these uh, future budget cycles, uh, that our prioritization of the F-35C for warfighting capability will increase. Thank you. General Davis. Um, Again, the, adding the six Harriers last year, uh, or the six F-35Bs to replace our combat losses is, is incredibly important. I want to say thank you very much on behalf of the entire Marine Corps for doing that. We lost a great squadron commander and, and uh, six airplanes destroyed and two damaged at Bastion. Those airplanes are now going to be fill up a, a VMFA-122. By getting those airplanes, it allowed us to move uh, an F-18 squadron, an older F-18 squadron, out and move the new airplane in. I just spent uh, the last two days down at Fort Worth with our F-35 pilots and took uh, General Neller went down there with us. Um, I'll tell you that we have a war winning airplane. So with the Marine Corps, we heard uh, Congressman Cook ask about going to expeditionary bases. We'll go to our amphibious ships. We'll go to expeditionary bases. And that airplane is going to change the way we fight. I think we took all the senior Marine leaders uh, down to go watch this for two days. And we had the, 
the young guys that are flying the airplane. Uh, they're flying in a completely different way than any we've ever flown before in a very positive way. True, real combat capability, real combat multiplier. I think it's going to make the, Navy, the Marine Corps that, that force and readiness to be exponentially more qualified, more capable to meet the threats that loom in our nation's bow. We've got exactly the right system out there. Thank you for the support on that. Uh, bottom line, what I do worry about is that it comes in, not only the airplanes, and we're going into a full rate production pretty close here in, in 18, um, is, the, uh, is the sustainment support that goes along with that. If we get this great new airplane, and my readiness rates aren't as, as good as they should be because I'm taking parts off good airplanes because I don't have the parts out there to put them on another airplane and to make the readiness goals I need to, I think that would be a real tragedy. It's a fantastic airplane. The young aviators that were out there, the only thing they complained about with this airplane, the only thing was spare parts, not enough spare parts. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, uh, General Davis, the F-35 is the only fifth-generation aircraft in production today, and uh, I'd like for you to highlight for us what the F-35 fifth-generation capabilities bring to the fight. Uh, what we saw yesterday uh, in a couple scenarios, um, and I want to be careful, we've got to watch the classified uh, nature of some of the stuff, the capabilities we have out there. Uh, we, we, went, we did close air support in a contested environment uh, through uh, overcast uh, uh, weather. Uh, we took a division of airplanes, and basically we had a division of F-35Bs launching off a, an amphibious uh, carrier. And, uh, and struck a target that would have taken to do to take the target. And I was the CEO of our weapon school, MOTS-1. To do that strike with the conventional assets the Marine Corps owns today would have taken 12 to 14 airplanes. We did it with four. Uh, we dealt with a, a very high-end SAM threat. We dealt with weather, uh, doing close air support uh, through the clouds. Uh, I'm not sure we would have got in with the conventional fourth-generation airplanes we fly today. It would have been a very difficult pro problem. With fifth-generation four airplanes and, and the way they flew those airplanes, uh, looking at uh, basically talking to the Ford Air Controller through the clouds with their synthetic aperture radar with picture quality uh, optics out there th through the cloud, a thousand foot overcast. We would not be able to do that today, but to a high degree of fidelity. I think it's a change the way we do close air support and change the way we support our Marines in the ground. The second scenario was a, was a four ship going against a very, a, a, a strike mission with defended by uh, very high end uh, surface air missiles and, and, a, and a very high end uh, adversary aircraft, uh, a division of aircraft. Uh, they, they took care of all the, the four uh, adversaries they're up against, took care of the SAM threat, and, and killed the target with no attrition. So I think it's going to change the way we do business. It's certainly changed the way that the, the Department of the Navy fights the fight because we'll fight our F-35Bs alongside the, the, the carrier air wing out there being an, an integrated fight out there, I think getting better value for the taxpayers' money and much better capability than we've had today. Like the V-22 has changed, the Marine Corps, and the, and the, and the, the naval services in a positive way how we project power from the sea. The F-35B is going to allow us to project power from a sea base and our expeditionary bases ashore in a very positive way for our nation. So we're, I was very excited what I saw yesterday, not from what I know, but really from what those young guys were doing on the airplane, with the technology that you provided for them. Thanks very much.